joining with Paddle TV on my continued mission to help people get outdoors and have a great experience while out there. And so I'm here with another in-depth, unbiased gear review. And in this video, I am reviewing a Gateway Kayak. In fact, one of the best-selling Gateway Kayaks. It's the Sea Eagle 330 Inflatable Kayak. Now, Gateway Kayaks can be great because they provide an accessible and affordable way for people to try kayaking. But Gateway Kayaks can also be a bad thing because if they're not good, if they don't provide a good paddling experience, then they can stop people right then and there from ever trying kayaking again. And that is a sad thing because kayaking is something that, that people should be able to enjoy. And so I'm gonna get this thing pumped up. We're gonna get it on the water. I'm gonna take it for a full test and hopefully get away from all of these flies. So let's go do it. <laughs> The Sea Eagle 330 inflatable kayak is currently selling for between 250 and 450 US dollars, depending on the package that you get. It's 11 feet 1 inch long, 34 inches wide, it weighs 26 pounds or 12 kilos, it has a max capacity of 500 pounds or 227 kilos. Its primary use is for all conditions. The kayak features five one-way valves a sun and saltwater resistant PVC material, an I-beam construction floor, two integrated skegs, a drain valve, a combination of seats and paddles depending on the package that you get, a carry bag, a repair kit, and the foot pump. It also has a three-year manufacturer defect warranty. <laughs> These bugs are just unbelievable. <laughs> well, on the surface, 300 bucks or more if you get the upgraded package. I mean, it looks pretty amazing what you get for the money, but that doesn't matter if it doesn't paddle well. So let's get it on the water and test it. But first, a couple of things I wanted to mention while I was putting this thing together. First of all, when you're blowing up uh, inflating uh, a kayak, usually they tell you, you you can inflate it to a certain PSI. But unless you have a pump that gives you the PSI, and only higher end pumps do that, how do you know? What is one PSI, two PSI, three PSI, 10 PSI? Well, what they have for this boat is this gauge where you put it on the tube that you're blowing up and you can then see by the stretch of the fabric whether or not it's blown to the right hardness. And so that's very smart. Now, typically for an inflatable kayak, I'll, I really push the idea of an electric pump, but for this sucker, it was really easy to blow up with the foot pump they provided. And another thing I really love about portable kayaks is when they have QR codes on the boat so that if you forget how something works, you can just scan it real quick, watch a video, get the information you need and keep going. Time to hit the water. So I've had over an hour to paddle this thing around and get a feel for it. And here's what I can tell you. And I'm going to start like I always do with portability. Now I already covered portability a little bit uh, and it's, you know, it's a, a fairly light inflatable kayak. So it's easy to get around. It comes with a no nonsense, simple bag with a drawstring at the top. You know what? That's great too. It, everything fits in it, including the pump very easily, you know, once I pumped it up the first time, went through the routine, this is going to be a simple boat to pump up, even with just a foot pump, not using an electric pump. So high marks for portability. It's an inflatable kayak. That's what it's primarily designed to be is very portable. So bingo. So let's get right on to how it performed on the water. <laughs> 
Starting with stability. Is it a stable kayak? Absolutely. This is a kayak anyone, any kind of paddler can hop in and feel stable. Now, is it so stable that you really don't have to at all worry about flipping? Well, it's not quite that stable. Um, there are some kayaks where I mean, you have to try to flip the kayak. This one, you do have to try to flip this kayak, but it could be someone throwing you a granola bar or a, or a water bottle. And if you really reach for that thing, you could flip in this kayak. That's what it would take, but it is still flippable. There are some kayaks and inflatable kayaks out there where, I mean, you would have to literally jump out of the kayak to flip the kayak. So if you are looking for something that is that stable, like a dock, then, you know, maybe not this one, but still, I mean, we're talking on the stability scale, probably instead of a, like an eight out of 10, this is highly stable. But the reason it's not a 10 out of 10 is because it actually offers performance. And that's what I'm gonna talk about next. Performance, meaning how well it actually paddles, how well it travels through the water. Now, if you're paddling a, a kayak that doesn't flip, or like virtually doesn't flip, then you are gonna give up performance. And this kayak, you gain some performance. It actually paddles better than I was expecting it to paddle. An 11 foot inflatable kayak of this nature, I really don't expect much of much of its performance at all especially something this is pvc it's not drop stitch construction and drop stitch inflatables what you've got is your your tubes and then they've got hundreds and thousands of stitches inside holding it together and that allows you to pump it up really hard and it makes it rigid and it makes it perform better this kayak i mean you pay for that you pay for drop stitch this kayak isn't drop stitch it could never be this price and be drop stitch so it's quite soft and usually you expect to give up a lot of performance and you do give up a bit but it still actually performs quite well it travels well in a straight line it, it's it's fun to paddle it doesn't feel like i'm paddling a dock a barge it's 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 pretty darn decent um it's still highly maneuverable turning this thing with sweep strokes is a breeze but the uh, those fins the integrated skegs or fins in the back help this thing track and i think the floor the i-beam floor definitely plays a role in helping this thing go forward uh better than i was expecting so now comfort well, I mean, look at me now. I'm sitting cross-legged. I mean, earlier I was lounging in this thing. It's super comfortable. The fact that it's soft, you give up maybe a little bit of performance, but you gain a little bit of comfort. You know, your legs are just the, have nice soft support when you're in a paddling position. The seat, the inflatable seat is a really nice touch. It's being inflatable. Not only is it soft on the tush, but it's raised off the floor. So if you do get any water in this floor, you're not sitting in that water. My butt is bone dry right now, and I love that. The seat also has some good back support. The way it's designed is, is, is actually pretty sweet, and uh, I like it. I like it. You know, is it the best seat in the world? No, but it's a solid, comfortable seat. Um, yeah, so top marks, the fact it's sit on top in nature and that you can, you can just lounge out, move your legs around, it's, it's just huge. And that's just the nature of a sit on top inflatable kayak or just any sit on top kayak. The one con on the comfort side is these big tubes here, they, they taper in, you know, fairly quickly to the bow and that just narrows the usable space in the inside and what that ends up doing it ends up putting my feet really close together and forces them to point there's no foot support or anything like that so after the hour of paddling my ankles were starting to feel a little uncomfortable for sure uh, it is also without a foot support system you know i've said it that a thousand times you not only lose some comfort but you lose some performance from that as well what i would probably do next time is take the second seat that comes with it and put it up front and use it as a foot support and see if that makes a difference. But uh, the flip side is, as soon as my ankle started to feel and feeling a little bit tweaked, yeah, I just took my legs out of the boat, relaxed for a bit and I was good to go again. Now, sizing wise and comfort, this is designed as a one and a two or a two person kayak and it 
came with two seats, and depending on the package you get, uh, two seats and two paddles. Now, this would definitely work. It has a capacity, weight capacity, for two people. But, uh, it, you know, you, you don't have that much room. If you have two bigger people in here, even though, though they might be under the weight threshold, they're going to lose space in here pretty quick. I think this would be a great boat for either a, a small couple or a parent and a kid. The kid be up front and they wouldn't notice the lack of space up front so much. Um, but two full-size adults would be pretty tight in here and that's why they have the Sea Eagle 370 which is a bigger version of this. So if I was getting this thing I would be getting it primarily as a single, as a solo kayak with the idea that hey I can also take my child in here very easily, very comfortably, but two full-size adults, I would definitely go for the 370. So how durable is the 330? Well, you know, only time will tell. An hour of paddling this thing isn't gonna really give me a, a, a full sense or a full appreciation for how, how durable or not durable it is, but first impressions are pretty darn good for the price of this thing. No, it's, it doesn't feel as durable as higher end kayaks uh, you pay, that you pay more for. Kayaks that have fabric over top, I think are gonna be more durable. That being said, it's a PVC is a durable material and it doesn't feel flimsy. And Sea Eagle has been making inflatable kayaks for over 50 years. They know what they're doing. They are a leader. Um, well, and this is one of the most, if not the most popular inflatable kayak on the market and has been for a while and so you don't get to that position and stay in that position without by producing crap you just don't and so I can't imagine this thing if it's taken care of uh, unless you you know get unlucky and you get a, a, a problem boat and they had but they have a three-year warranty against manufacturing uh, defects so that's kind of taken care of if you take care of this thing it will it, it's pretty durable. It'll last 100%. They say it's good up to whitewater to class three whitewater, which is, you know, intermediate whitewater. That's, that's not just a little bit of current. That's some real waves. I don't know if I would recommend that. I would say class one, two for sure. Um, it depends on the class three. If it's big water, big waves, but not many big rocks, uh, then okay. But in general, if you're getting into class three whitewater, I think you should be, it's a different game. You should be taking a whitewater course, learning about whitewater. So stick to class one and two whitewater. If you're dealing with sharp rocks, a shoreline, some shorelines, some rivers just have sharp, jagged rocks. You know, you're not gonna wanna slam into them super hard with this thing. I think it could take a lot, but just don't push it. You're not paying the premium for a kayak that is designed to last much longer. This one's designed to last if you take care of it. Value, overall value, well my gosh, 250 to 450 US dollars, depending on the package you get, that's an exceptional price and I truly think it's exceptional value. <sighs> you know, you get everything you need to go except a life jacket and budget for that because you have to you're it's absolutely foolish and it's in most places nearly all cases uh, it's required by law that you have a life jacket when you're paddling but more so than it being a legal issue just wear a life jacket when you're paddling it's just the smart thing to do so you need to get a life jacket but otherwise you get the kayak you get a, with all the bells and whistles you get the, the paddle, not this paddle, this is definitely an upgrade paddle, um, and you get uh, the pump, you get a repair kit if you need it. <sighs> it's exceptional value. There's no doubt about it. Now, something to keep in mind though, it still is, like I said at the beginning of this video, it's a gateway kayak. And so this kayak is actually something you can have a lot of fun with for quite some time, for a couple of years. But if you really start enjoying kayaking more, it, you'll probably want to upgrade. Keep that in mind. Do you spend the money now for this gateway kayak? Or if you really do know you're into kayaking, you might want to spend a bit more money and get a, a higher performance, a higher quality inflatable kayak. And you know, Sea Eagle, I've reviewed a bunch of Sea Eagles. There's tons of different inflatable kayaks and I've reviewed a bunch of, a bunch of other higher performance 
and more expensive inflatable kayaks. You'll you can find those reviews here on Paddle TV. But um, anyway, great value. Who's this one for? Well. I kind of said it before, it's for someone who wants to really try kayaking in a, an accessible, affordable way, um, but wants something that they don't just try it and say, yeah, I like it, and then I will, oh, now I need a better kayak. No, you can actually, you can paddle this thing uh, for quite some time before you'll really feel like you need to upgrade. Uh, it's for someone who's primarily interested in paddling single, but likes the idea of being able to paddle it uh, as a tandem with two people knowing that not two full-size people isn't the right choice isn't it isn't ideal for that get the bigger one the 370 it's for someone who needs of course a portable kayak so there you have it the full breakdown of the seagull 330 overall it does definitely get two big thumbs up for me as a gateway kayak i hope you guys have enjoyed this review if you have let me know, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and tell me your experiences that you've had with this kayak if you've been paddling it. I've only had an hour. A lot of you out there will have had years of experience with this. I wanna know, and the other viewers wanna know how it actually performs uh, over the long term. And we'll see you again soon for another paddling video.